So now we want to think about how do some functions in three dimensions uh, look if we graph them. So let's start with a case like y equals x squared. Now in two-dimensional space, we know that this would describe a simple parabola. But three-dimensional space, we have three directions in which an, uh, if, you know, the variables can change, the x, y, and z directions. And so when a variable is missing in an equation, we have to assume that that variable can take on any value. So here, no ma uh, when x is, let's say, 2, we know that y is 4, but z can still be anything it wants to be. Uh, so we, if we try to sort of imagine what this looks like, if x is 0, y would be 0, but z could be anything it wants to be. If x is 1, y is going to be 1 but z could be whatever it wants to be still. If x is 2, y is 4. So we're sort of getting that parabola shape in the xy plane, but then z can be anything it wants to be. If x was to be negative 1, y would be 1, but z could again be whatever it wants to be. If x is negative 2, y is 4, but z could be whatever it wants to be. And so while we get this parabolic shape in the xy plane, it extends upwards for all values of z, and so we end up with not just a parabola, but in fact a parabolic sort of column. Uh, and in fact, any shape like this we call a cylinder. Whenever we have a single shape extending out in a direction, it's called a cylinder. And so we would call this a parabolic cylinder. Now what you usually think of cylinders uh, is technically a circular cylinder, right? Where you have a circle that extends uh, in all directions, okay? And so there is a parabolic cylinder where you have a, par a parabolic relationship in x and y extending for all values of z. Now, well, how would we have something different if we had let's say z equals x cubed. So now we have a relationship between x and z, and y we're allowing to take on any value. So in x and z we're going to have a parabolic relationship, uh, sorry, cubic relationship. So for example, if x was 0, z would be 0. If x was 1, z would be 1, if x was 2, z would be 8, right, so we're getting sort of that curve shape that way. If x was extending out the other direction and down, if x was negative 1, z would be negative 1, if x was negative, sorry, negative 2, z would be negative 8, we're getting the curve down that way, right, so there's that cubic shape occurring in the xz plane, but then that can extend for all values of y. So if we sort of imagine this coming out a little ways, uh, curves down like that, it's kind of hard to see what's going on here, but we have that cubic shape extending for all values of y. This would be a cubic cylinder. This would be a cubic cylinder. And you can sort of imagine what this shape would look like by thinking about a piece of paper, where if we turn it sideways, we're bending it into sort of that cubic S shape, but it's extending for all values of Y, right? So we're really imagining that cubic shape extending for all values of Y, we're imagining this sort of bent piece of paper type of shape. That's our cubic cylinder.